Now let's talk about diastereomers. How can we draw the diastereomer of this molecule? How can we draw it? To draw a diastereomer of a molecule, all you need to do is change some, but not all, of the chiral centers. So let's change the first chiral center. The OH is on the wedge. Let's put it on a dash. And so this is the diastereomer of this molecule. Now notice that this is basically, you can consider it the trans isomer because this one is in the front, that's in the back. And this appears to be a cis isomer because both of these groups are in the back. And cis and trans geometric isomers are a type of a diastereomer, which is a subcategory of stereoisomers. So all of the molecules are connected to the same thing, but the, the way that they're arranged in space is different. And so these are diastereomers. So let me give you another example. So let's say we have a molecule with three chiral centers. Draw two diastereomers of this molecule. So remember, to draw a diastereomer, we need to change some, but not all, of the chiral centers. So let's say if we have a molecule that have the configuration RRR. I'm not saying this one has that configuration, but let's say some generic molecule has it. The diastereomer could be RRS, only one chiral center has changed, or it could be RSS, in this case we changed two chiral centers, or it could be SRR, we changed one but a, a completely different chiral center. So all of these molecules are diastereomers of the original one. So let's draw two diastereomers of the molecule that we have on the page. So I'm going to change the configuration of the OH molecule and everything else will stay the same. And so these two are diastereomers. I could change one or two chiral centers at a time but not three. If I change all three it could be an, an enantiomer or it could be a meso compound. In this case, it's going to be an enantiomer if I change all three because there's no internal line of symmetry. If there was an internal line of symmetry, then I would get a meso compound if I had two chiral centers and I change all of them. But if you have three chiral centers like what we have here and there's no internal line of symmetry, it's going to be an, an enantiomer if you change all the chiral centers. Now let's draw one more diastereomer. So this time, I'm going to change the chiral centers that have that's attached to the bromine atom and the chlorine atom. So the OH group is still going to be on the wedge. The bromine group is now on the wedge, and the chlorine group is going to be on the dash. And so this is a diastereomer of the original molecule. So let me give you another example. So let's say we have a methyl group, a bromine atom, and an alcohol. So go ahead and draw one diastereomer that corresponds to this molecule. So I'm going to change two chiral centers, but not all three. So I'm going to change the first chiral center, the methyl group, and I'll change the second one, the one with the bromine atom. But the last one, I have to make sure it stays the same. And so these two molecules are diastereomers.